It's a vibe all the time. It's no surprise. Can't look me in my eyes. Don't wanna see me fall 'cause I know I'm gonna rise. It's a vibe all the time. It's a vibe all the time. It's a vibe. It's a vibe. All the time, it's no surprise. Can't look me in my eyes. They wanna see me fall 'cause they know I'm on the rise. It's a vibe. Hello you guys, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Sue Alida Neon Kanini and if this is your first time here, welcome to my channel. I hope you like it enough to end up subscribing. And if you are a returning watcher or subscriber, thank you so much. I really appreciate your views and support. And just know that God's timing is perfect. So if you clicked on this video, you're surely not here by mistake. You're not here by coincidence. There's something in your mind and I need to pick it. Let's talk about... Today my topic is going to be things that I wish I knew before I came to America or moved to America like and it's really interesting for me because I've watched so many of these videos obviously before moving here and now three years later being here um, I'm really still having some things that I really still wish I knew and I'm gonna be tackling the real stuff that had an impact on me over these three years that I've been here in the United States so um, I've analyzed to the points I've came down to basically 15 top things that still affect my experience and that I would wish someone else would know before they come here just because preparation is everything it's literally they say if you don't plan you plan to fail so part of planning is knowing what you're getting yourself into and once you know these things they are kind of easier to avoid so I really hope for your sake sis or bro, you stay and you watch this video and you get plugged at the end of it. If this information comes up liable to you and you feel like someone else might need it that you know, or you yourself loved it and you could use it, please give me a like and share the video with anyone who you think needs it. Um, so like I said, I brought it down to 15 points and I'm going to try to stay on topic as much as possible to shoot through it because I'm not trying to make this a long video, but I'm trying to make it as informative as possible because now this, this series of content is basically focused on informing and teaching each other. So my first point, jumping right into it, like I said, oh, and a heads up, just if this is your first time here. I'm South African, I reside, in, I reside in America, I moved to America 2019 November. If this is not your first time here and you've heard this way too many times, just understand that right now we are trying to get on the same page. So I'm sorry. And let's go to it. I feel like my screen is so bright and I'm gonna, like I literally wrote the points. Oh my, you can't even see. But I wrote the points down on my notes and because of how bright my screen is, even you guys can't like understand and see well the so let's get right into it my first point is how serious they are about immigration America and Americans take immigration very seriously so if you consider moving to the states just educate yourself a little bit more on what immigrants are and what is migrating what is traveling and the documentations that you will need and the permits and your identity cards that you're all gonna need like make sure that you have that stuff and even if you're not the type of person to keep a file with you you are gonna need to be that type of person if you consider coming to the states or if you are in the united states and you've been here and you're just like kind of still not sure make sure that you always gather information and evidence of your identity and you keep it together because child they do not play about immigration they really take that stuff seriously and everywhere you go applying for a job whether you are booking somewhere whether you trying to get an apartment or trying to get into school your immigration status is gonna matter so always try to be on top of it understand if you're on a visa or work permit or um, a lottery what kind of paperwork you have once you understand the paperwork you have and you study that paperwork beforehand 
learn a little bit about the American immigration laws and then you can always be ahead of them and you can always be more prepared because there's still a big gap coming from South Africa your home country where you don't really need to always have proof of identification and that you are legally supposed to be in South Africa now coming here you're gonna need that so whether you're coming from anywhere in the world just always keep that documentation it is very serious and if you don't have it it's not gonna make America and your experience here any easier my second point is work 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 and work and work and you work and you will work and work if you move to America um, reason I say this is because in most countries for example my country South Africa we work basically for the sake of affording life and just like being able to make ends meet and have a career and stuff like that but americans are so work driven it's 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 crazy they spend way more time at work or their careers and into um jobs than they do with family friends interactions you'll basically work more hours than you have with yourself or family um and full day of work in america we're looking at nothing less than eight hours if you're working eight, less than eight hours in america uh, you are a privileged person like that's seen as middle class but the lower class and the lower middle class you're gonna work at least eight hours a day some of them work two jobs working three jobs in america two jobs is very common which is something in other countries is not that common like in my country you get a qualification you get a job or you start a career and that's what you're doing but we have way more free time we have so many holidays like we have so much breaks in between even with school but americans are always working like you don't have there's nothing called december holidays there's no like month off during december even the summer that like we hear they have summer break and all that it doesn't mean you're not going to be working like people who work are going to be working it's just the kids at school who get a little bit of a break but Americans work way more than it makes sense to me you know but just know that and get yourself in that mindset even if you're coming here for school you're gonna probably end up having to get a side job as a waiter or a, a bookkeeper or a librarian something because this this like the lifestyle here is way more independent you are once you're above the age of 18 once you hit 18 you're basically seen as someone who needs to be capable of taking care of themselves and the only way you're gonna do that is by getting a stable job and working you can't just get funding you need to have a lot of proof to get funding and you need to be a citizen to get a lot of funding and even the citizens here work rather than take that funding because you need a job in America um, my point number three is the currency difference goes both ways this what I mean by that is poor if this is a logical example in my country we use rands like now right now we're looking at one dollar is equal to 17 rands so you think that's really amazing and that's great but once you come here to America it means if you ever struggle and you need help financially you can't just ask your family for help financially because it means whatever they send to you will be divided by 17 in order to be sustainable here in America which is really ridiculous people think oh bread is like what seven dollars there um, it like America is really cheap but when you convert that it goes up to okay so if you're buying it in rands it will be like 60 rands for one bread so if you were to ask your mom or your daddy for help they would have to send you about 60 rands for you to afford a mcdonald's meal here um but if you are converting it from here to back home or a country with a lower currency then you are at an advantage but just know it doesn't apply to every single thing that you buy or every time you try to send money but yeah i would just say keep in mind that as much of as much as we excited that when you send money home it's gonna be this amount you're coming here to study most likely you're coming here to start a new life you're coming here to start a whole new job or a whole new career so 
at some point you might find yourself needing help just be very aware that you're not going to be able to simply just get help from home so you're going to have to really have good savings and you're going to have to have some money saved and stashed up in your account somewhere for emergencies like that um point number four is you need permission to work legally it's called a work permit so when you come to the united states some people come with visas that qualify them to work some people come with visas that don't qualify them to work some people come with green cards which automatically will qualify you to work but most especially if you're applying for a visa or a temporal um, permit to stay in america if you're gonna be here for more than three months you want to make sure that you're gonna be able to get a job to get yourself some source of income I advise that even if you are gonna be a student on an HB1 or an F1 visa or a J1 visa you still want to go ahead and get um, a work permit because it doesn't automatically mean because you got this visa you can get a job in America and when I tell you even McDonald's will not hire you without a work permit in America they will not you can't even become a mall cleaner or swipper you can't even become a school um, cleaner or general without a work permit in America you can't even do child care without a work permit in America like every job respects and requires a work permit to serve dine work at an office wherever so I really advise that you make sure that whatever st um, st status you come in has a work permit included and if it doesn't apply for it separately um now i'm not saying there's no under the table if you've heard of some the people who work without it yes some people do it but i'm not i'm not gonna say it works really well for you it, it just doesn't in order for you to get a good stable job and a job with like fair treatment if you know what i mean you really want to get on that work permit like i i definitely came here on a j1 visa and when i came on a j1 visa it says it's a work study and travel visa so i believed i had a work permit only to find out it's not really a work permit it's just a visa that says you can have a work permit so you really want to do a lot of homework and research and just be on top of it to avoid the mistakes that i made and some of us made and if you already made the mistakes and you hear you know what i'm talking about i hope the next points help you more and now moving on to point number five it is healthcare is not free in the united states now nothing is free to begin with we pay for water we pay for sewage we pay for trash you pay for you pay for your trash you pay to dump trash in america stuff that you don't need and is useless to you you still have to pay to dispose it that's how much nothing is not free here so you really need to um know that health care is a very important thing that we all need because you never prepare to get sick you never know when you're gonna fall ill and that's why health care in america is so important um having a medical aid card is very like it's part of like the rules of having your paperwork to be here temporarily they need to know that if something happens to you you can be taken care of now for example in my home country south africa if i get stabbed on the road god forbid and i run into a clinic or anywhere that has a medical uh, has medical assistance I will be helped and then after they help me they will get my um, identification name number and whatever they need so that they can find my family to alert them of where, where I am and what has happened to me but in America if you walk into a hospital stabbed or in labor they still gonna want your social security if you can speak child you will tell them your details so that they can charge you sometimes you will be bleeding and they will make you sign stuff that says that you will pay for whatever treatment you will get here to get your teeth pulled out is like a ridiculous amount and before you you sit down to get them pulled out they want you to sign um 
something that says before you get um, the injection to make you sleep you will sign this that if that's not enough and they need to add more or they find something else on your mouth and then the cost is more than what they told you you are gonna pay for it and if you don't pay for that if you don't sign that they basically won't like take the whether you have an abscess tooth and you're like dying of pain they will still not help you unless you sign paperwork saying you will pay for it at some at a given point in time and it will be charged and it will stay in your record if you don't pay for it until you take care of it it disappears automatically in seven years but you just don't want that because that will affect your paperwork like i said immigration stuff is taken very seriously and then um my point number six let's look for point number six 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 they still use the imperial system the imperial system is the opposite of what most countries or almost all the whole world uses which is the matrix system the matrix system is kilograms kiloliters um kgs um mile like no yeah when i say i weigh 100 kgs in america they use pounds they use um complicated stuff so just knowing that the matrix system is different oh my gosh my friend is calling i'm so sorry girl can i call you back okay friend thank you that's why i never finish my videos because i always get hooped into calls but let's get back to it so they use a different system to identify like we use degrees they use fairy heights we use um centimeters they use their own things and it just makes you seem a little bit smart tar than you may be when you get here so you i would rather you know that and you research on it and you prepare for it whether you're coming here for a job or school you don't want to sound dumb because they're gonna take you for dumb not knowing that they're the ones who are using the wrong stuff like they use a, like their clock is different from ours we use we all use what they call military time which means we have the clock starting from one to 23 americans don't have that it goes from 1 to 12 and 12 and 1 to 12 again which is crazy to me but it makes sense to them so you want to know that child so we can prepare 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 like i'm saying if we prepared then we're gonna win and then point number seven sales tax is added at the end of each transaction so it doesn't matter if you're going into a shop or a store or you're paying for school or you're paying for medical health or you're paying anything basically like whatever so whatever you're paying for if the total for that is a hundred dollars just expect a percentage of it to be added and that percentage is known as your tax we all pay taxes in our countries but normally if i'm picking up a packet of chips and it says it's five dollars tax is already on it doesn't mean when i get there there's going to be more money added for tax when i'm buying a car it says it's this amount tax is already included but not in the states so that's something you want to know just so when you get here you don't shop crazy get to the till and be shocked um point number eight americans not to say there's anything wrong with them raising this point but i will say they come off a little bit more close-minded and this is not because they choose to be close-minded but it's because of how they are raised and taught the topics and subjects that are like important to them and the, the way and they are made to pursue and see the world for example americans think africans are starving and there's a whole malnutrition and poverty issue in africa so as soon as you say oh i'm from south africa they start to be like oh but your english sounds good oh you sound like british oh how come you they get shocked basically when they hear africa they expect to see someone who looks like they're struggling because that's that's the per 
perception they are taught it's not like i learned over my three years that it's not even how they trying to be shady it's just really how they raised so for example the, the mothers will be like oh don't waste food i'm africa is starving because when you turn on the tv kfc mcdonald's and all of them are running ads saying do you want to donate to africa so that they can have food save a child in africa so like, like two dollars for them to get a meal you know so it's like it's just things that are put in front of them they are not shown the beauty and the wealth and the health and the happy life that africa has they are just shown the negative you know and that's just how it is so you might run into people and get very frustrated feeling like they don't